If you're a student of UX design, then you already know how tough it is to design good looking UI. But chinta ki koi baat nahi because I have some trade secrets for you. Welcome to the UI redesign playlist where I pick real apps and real student case studies and practically break down on how we can improve their user interfaces. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. All right, so let's jump into the Figma file. So I had asked this student to redesign an application that she uses on a day to day basis. And just for this video, let's call her Ayushi because I don't want to reveal the identity because of course we are criticizing somebody's work. So Ayushi is an active user of the Yono business app from the SBI bank. So she can access the Yono app and figure out, you know, what is her account up to and to send money and all of those. So let me screen share. And I had asked her to put it together in a couple of slides and send me a loom video. So this is her entire Figma file and uh, I am not showing you her Figma files so or basically copied everything. So these were some slides that she had created for her loom video. And then this is also a quick documentation of everything that she's done. Now let's cover the basics. Firstly, I really appreciate the page structure. So this is how she had structured her file. You had research, a checklist that she had created for herself, case study, which was actually the document. And then she had a separate page for the loom presentation. She had also arranged her inspiration inspiration very clearly. So if you remember, I had reviewed one more student work, which was from the Bank of Baroda app. So she had actually made this mistake of blending all of her inspiration together. But in this case, uh, Ayushi has put it all together really, really cleanly. Now, if I look at the inspiration, I'd realize that most of it is from Dribble. So this is one downside that I don't see any inspiration from applications like Mobin, because that is where you get real, real inspiration, right? Because these are just like core screens. So you don't really know uh, what is working and what is is not working. So I can also see that she's put these rectangles on top of these inspirations. So I think this is her way of just picking things that make more sense to her. So all right, good idea. Just below inspiration, she had also placed her existing screen. So basically these are screenshots from her own iPhone. So she's a user of the app. She's taken four core screens. So this is my home screen. If you put in your login using your M pin, then I think this is the dashboard, which is visible to you. So it has like a couple of different features. Then I think this is your M password where I think you can see the list of all of your transactions, all the money that has been inputted. And I think this is where if you click on the filter, then this menu opens up. And then she has a place for proposed solutions plus assets. So I've just copied uh, her core solutions and uh, welcome Tanya Jen. So I think this is the login screen. And once you enter, this is how the new screen looks like. And this is the transaction details. And these are all the components. So overall, a lot of things have been fixed because I think this person has been watching a lot of my videos. So she has arranged the components, the screens in a specific way. I can see that the frames are also named properly. And then she's also created a slide for before and after. So this is before you can see a huge, huge improvement. And I can also see the fact that if you don't have your login done, then what will you do with all of these features? So it makes complete sense. Uh, I just wish that she had better input fields because these underlines don't really make it very obvious that this is going to be an input field. Uh, login using username, again, a common mistake that I keep seeing again and again is people using capital case in their copy. Please folks don't do that. Forgot your password has a super small font size. So I can uh, totally sense the fact that the type styles are missing. I can see a lot of uh, different typefaces. In this case, she has put a post login screen. So before looks like this only, but on the right side, this is the new version. Uh, she has the total balance and really like the fact that you can toggle the visibility on and off. You have your account number, you have your four main features, uh, but I'm very confused as to why this says quick pay because it has request and pay contact and you know, cash. I don't think this comes under quick pay. Maybe this copy could have been quick actions, savings and deposits. You have all of your FDs up top and you have your recent transactions. One thing that I'm confused about is the fact that where will they get this DP from and what happens when they can't fetch the logo. So there is no case declared for that. I can't really see that. And what people usually forget is that when you have these transactions in your bank, this is not the name that your bank sends you. This is not the data that the API sends you. It is usually something like UPI slash IMPS slash transaction slash like it's a it's a very long uh, script, right, that you need to put in. So I think it would have been very, very good would have been way, way more useful if 
if she had considered the fact that this is not how the real copy uh, looks like right then let's go down all right so now we have the next screen as well so what she's done is she's shown the m passbook screenshot on the left side and on the right side you have your new design so i can obviously see that when it's cutting money it's red it's upi plus for green so i really like that uh transaction details today 12th july yesterday 11 july this works uh, i really like the new bottom bar as well like it looks way more modern pretty surprisingly the original one doesn't even have a bottom bar i have no clue how they are navigating in through this app and yeah so that is the end all right now the most interesting part about this case study is that i had asked her to put everything into a, a pdf sort of a thing like assume as if you're publishing this on behance so the things that you see in front of you this is an assumption that if she were to post this on behance this is how the frames would look like so the cover looks great but i really really wish if she had put in the original screenshot or the screenshot of a redesign right because this screenshot right here gives no value at all and it's actually pixelated so you can see that you only need one and even this is also getting cropped out so this is 100 not how the application would really look like and a solo design sprint i think this is uh not needed i think it is obvious uh even on your case study uploading it would show that uh, it is you who has done this so saying a solo design sprint uh, doesn't make much sense case study you know bank app redesign sbi being the world's this this, this. my role duration and yes this was a one week sprint so she has done this in a very limited amount of time uh context searching and this is something very interesting that she did so she is saying that because it was a quick design sprint she was not able to conduct user interviews so she went to this app's feedback section and collected low ratings and started taking clues from there which is a very very interesting observation right the thing is when you have limited time you need to be very resourceful you can't just wait for ias and wireframes and user personas of course you can use something like notionsmith.ai to create those user interviews but this feedback right here is concrete feedback right so when you take feedback from the app store the amount of value that you can get is insane before you move ahead i want to tell you about our latest learning website how to prom.in where you can get free ai resources roadmaps and step by step guides that will teach you everything that you need to know about tools like chat gpt and mid journey Then she made a list of key insights, which is very, very important. So this is very, very close to annotation cards. Now, folks, what happens is that people start collecting screenshots and inspirations. They don't spend enough time breaking down why this thing is not working and they don't put it in words. They rely on their thoughts. It is very, very important to write down your key insights and to use as simple words as you can. Don't make it into paragraphs. Don't write complicated words. Don't use jargon. Assume that a founder is reading your case study or a business owner is reading your case study. You don't have to show off the fact that you know heavy big words. You need to show off the fact that you can find small, small details, that you can recognize those gaps, that you can recognize those mental models happening in real time. So she has made a good list and then she has broken down the existing design. So she has first started identifying all the problems. So you can use cue cards, annotation cards, whatever it is. Now notice how for every piece of content, she has a heading and a subtext, and then she is pointing out on that part of the screen. So well done on that. Now, when we go down on this screen, she has put all the UI screenshots that she wants to redesign. So I think that is a good place to set context. And then she has actually split her entire one week into goals. So she's saying that the first priority or the first goal would be to reduce the number of taps to make the flow more more easy to understand i think it's not making it more easy it's making more efficient or less time consuming so it is very important that you frame your goals correctly because if you reduce the number of tabs it is not just about making it easy to understand right because ui can make it easy to understand better copy can make it easy to understand but reducing the number of tabs make it more efficient or make it less time consuming simplify the account management process to make it easier for users to track their finances this makes sense and then you have problem statements and she has picked three problem statements. How might we make the user find what they need more easily? How might we make flows more easy to navigate? How might we make the user feel more secure? Now here, if she were to just make problem statements and just start with this sentence, make the user make flows, make the user feel more secure, even this would have been pretty much apt, right? And what you can do is you can always say that these are my goals. So I would recommend you folks to ask yourself that if I can communicate something in five words, don't even use six. 
keep the copy as clear as to the point as you can okay now we come to the final screens i think we've already done a quick breakdown and i'm not going to go into the details of the ui design in this video because the goal of the video is to just highlight key insights key takeaways we've already made so many videos on ui redesigns in fact we've also recently uploaded a video on writing your case studies like a proper case study so what you see right now is called a quick ui redesign sprint so this is a sprint it's not very detailed and these sprints are good for your own personal skills but you can't expect these sprints to get you a full-time job because when you apply for a full-time job it is not just about making things look pretty but it is also about establishing systems you know just understanding the goals of the business making sure that you understand you know basic things like design systems hierarchy accessibility all of those things you know problem solving in general so this is a ui sprint and i recommend all of my students to do at least one sprint a week right and you don't have to spend one week on each sprint you can just spend like two three hours but you know these exercises really oil up your brains like it it puts your brains into this mode where you start become very observant and the more you do your ui redesigns the better you'll become at ui because it is something that comes with practice so ux psychology problem solving these things take time because this is about you changing the way you think but when it comes to ui you can very easily pick ui if you practice every single week because it is something that you can accelerate the more number of screens you trace the better your pattern recognition will become and very soon your gut will get fine-tuned your intuition will get fine-tuned so what you need to do is build up a habit of doing these ui redesigns regularly so i really like the fact that for every single screen she has made this height and then she's added these small small pointers that makes it very easy for me to understand how this is working and why this is working and even in between these she's put these spaces she's put these dotted lines she's put a heading uh, the heading summarizes the content she's not used a lot of heavy words but when i was going through this case study i also realized that there were some things uh, that were slightly off grammar there were some things that could have been said in lesser words so i am a huge fan of crisp copywriting right and i keep recommending this book called the almanac of naval ravikant if you haven't read that book please read it it will not just help you improve your life in general but it will also teach you how to write clearly how to think clearly one thing that she could have done is the fact that she could have highlighted these points separately but i know that you know there would be limited time but for me it becomes slightly difficult to understand that where is this categorized other section right or where is the transactions display so i still have to spend some time understanding because hide option ka text is in the center whereas the hide option is on the very top so it might become difficult but yeah i think overall this was a very very legit case study and uh, she had also made these slides for the loom video so as as i told you even in our ux case study videos i always recommend students to add a 60 second loom video just quickly summarizing what your app is about right and the only way that she could have made this better is by adding gifs and prototypes and proper proper high fidelity renders within the slide themselves because now figma also allows you to add videos it also allows you to add gifs so if you were to put gifs inside your frames and then make a loom video your recruiter will be really really impressed right so these are small small things that really help you stand out and uh, yeah overall i think she has done a pretty good job even with the summarization even with the context setting and inspiration as i mentioned these exercises are not to make perfect uis but it is actually to just make you better at small small things make you better at collecting inspiration so folks you need to understand that when it comes to these kind of sprints there are three phases phase number one is when you collect inspiration now you need proper proper list of resources for those inspirations so you can check the description i will paste all resources for ux ui design systems and figma you need to make sure that you're collecting relevant inspiration whether it's for a mobile app whether it's for a web app within the mobile app if it's for android or for ios within the platform it's for the category that you're working in whether it's entertainment ed tech healthcare education whatever it is then you collect those inspirations and then you formulate them you break them down so in our previous episode if you check out the bank of baroda app that will teach you how i organize my inspiration so that will give you a proper proper in depth look into how ansh actually breaks down inspiration so that would be phase number 1 in phase number 2 you actually sit down and understand what is wrong with your app and then you decide what you want to fix because when you do an audit of an application there would be 10 problems in front of you but you need to prioritize which is the most important problem because even in problems there are two categories one are pain points and one are good to haves 
there's a very common metaphor that product makers use and that is of painkillers versus vitamins so some features are so so important that their solutions are true painkillers because the users are absolutely struggling without those features on the other hand there are some things which are good to have like maybe a good animation maybe a good pop up maybe a few illustrations better colors these are all good to haves and they come under the category of vitamins when you are prioritizing your product please make sure that you put your pain killers on the top and all the vitamins on the second level so things like iconography your banners your ads your visuals all of these things are vitamins but understanding the user flow making sure that the feature works end to end making sure that the app is functional the app has no bugs in it like you know functional bugs in it these are your pain killers so when you are doing your sprints even when you are designing even when you are doing your developer handoff you need to make sure that everybody is on the same page on defining the pain killers that you have prioritized what is the most important thing now i also know that a lot of you students are still in your learning phase and you feel that you know you don't have a job you need your first internship so folks for that i have already created three very very important videos video number 1 is a ux road map i will put the link in description that will tell you how to plan your career your second video is insider tips on getting a high paying ux design job that will teach you all the trade secrets on cracking the high paying jobs again link would be in description then in my last video i have made like these two videos part 1 part 2 for writing your ux case studies you need to watch those videos end to end like there is so much of valuable information so many mistakes that i did that other students make we have made a list checklist of things that you need to do if you follow those two videos trust me you will be on the path to success so i will paste all the links in description apart from this we've also been creating some content on ai tools like chat gpt and mid journey so please keep yourself updated with all all of these new tools in place because they will help you become more efficient in problem solving in brainstorming in general apart from this we've also started to make videos on spatial design which is designing for augmented reality virtual reality specifically for the apple vision pro because just like when the iphone came in a lot of app designers made a lot of money a lot of app developers made a lot of money similarly when apple vision pro enters the market we will have a lot of products like the vision pro and the apple vision pro of course when that happens a lot of tech companies are going to aggressively hire designers developers and product managers who understand ux who understand spatial design who understand the space in general so at that time you will have maximum leverage if you start today if you really like this video please tell me in the comment section because every single comment motivates us to make more content if there's any specific category of content that you want me to make let me know in the comment section we will make sure that we cover it in the next set of videos make sure you click on subscribe subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update because we will be uploading some extremely valuable videos in the space of upskilling design and ai with that being said i hope that you're taking care of your mind and body this is your dost ansh mehra signing out if you like this video make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button i regularly upload videos on ux design marketing and storytelling